Okay, so we're picking up where we left off. Um, this is video number two um, <clears throat> on biomes. All right, let's do this. Okay, so biome number one was the tundra, and biome number two that we're going to talk about is the taiga. The taiga is also known as the boreal forest. Um, those are just two names that are synonymous. You, you may come in contact with either one. They are the same. Okay. Um, the taiga is a very, very, very large biome um, because it is covering. Let me see if I can get a. Hang on. Hey, 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 hey. Click. There we go. Um, it covers an enormous amount of land. Okay. So we are talking Alaska, uh, a good portion of Canada most of russia um let's see where else am i looking at um honestly just even northern um europe like most of it so either way um it covers a huge amount of land and it is beautiful so when you think of cold snowy places that are full of trees and they're usually full of what are called conifer trees so conifer, let's see if I can. So this word right here, conifer, a cool forest biome of conifers. Um, <clears throat> if you see the little symbol at the bottom, those are cones, right? Conifer, cone. And so these are trees that have cones. They reproduce with seeds from cones. And so these are not big broadleaf trees like um, you would see around here that change colors. These are gonna be the ones that have needles right little like pine needles um so these are things like pine trees and cedar trees uh they are also known as evergreens and so why are they called evergreens because they literally stay green year round even in the dead of winter um these trees are particularly suited for this environment uh here is a picture of what it looks like in a or in well yeah a taiga type forest in a boreal forest and so what you will notice is that there are still lots of mountains in these places. There are still lots of snow, um, but you have a lot, 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 lot more uh, plant life in comparison to the tundra. So if the tundra is at the very top of the world, we're just boop, right underneath it. And now we have a lot more plants and a lot more animals. OK, um, so let's see if we can get into that. All right, things that are noted in the, let me move my face, things that are noted in the taiga. It is still really, really stinking cold in the winter, and it does have summer, but the summers are very brief, um, and they're pretty mild. So when we say summer, um, you might need to reevaluate your impression of summer, because that summer may be something like, oh, it got to 75 degrees. Whew. Um, like that type of deal. And it may only last uh, June, July. Ding, ding. And you're done. Um, I was in a taiga type forest, an arboreal forest, and it still snowed overnight uh, on the 4th of July. So it's still summer, but you will want a jacket. And at nighttime, especially up in the mountains, it's still definitely cold enough to snow. So it's summer for them, which is different than summer for other places. All right. Um, so their, um, their winters can be long. OK, so we talked about how in the tundra, winter can be 24 hours a day, every day for many, many months. And summer can be 24 hours of sunlight for many months. Um, this one is a little different. There are periods that can be considered um, like 23 hours of sunlight or 24 hours of sunlight and 24 hours of darkness and things like that for several um, days in a row, if not weeks in a row. Um, but there's usually some. It's, it, that period of time is much shorter than it would be in the tundra for example so 
this summer 24 hours of daylight thing, if it's present at all, right, which is only like kind of on the cusp type places, um, it's not going to last for six straight months. That's just usually not going to happen. It can happen in some of these places. I'm not going to say that it can't. But when you get into, you know, more of like southern Canada and stuff like that, it's unlikely to happen the, as frequently in those places as it would, you know, somewhere uh, higher um, in latitude. So anyway, that's not to say that most of the day won't be darkness with a brief period of sunlight or most of the day will be um, sunlight with a brief period of darkness. Um, it just, it depends where you are. Okay. Um, also, the soil there is not great. It's just not. Um, so you're not going to be able to grow lush vegetables and fruits and flourish in gardening like that. If that's, if you're trying to be a farmer, this is not your place. Um, okay. So it does get rainfall and snowfall, um, and they consider it moderate. Some places get a ton, um, and then some of these places don't. And so you kind of just depends on where you are. Is there a mountain nearby? Is there not type deal? Are you on a coast? Or are you not? Um, but it's considered moderate. So it does get it does get a good amount of water. All right, let's why does it keep doing that? All right, let's talk about animals. Okay. Animals. All right, animals. There's so many animals here. So so many. And they are so, they're so cute. All right, so wide paws, right? Because you want to put that, like, uh, expand your surface area. If you try to walk on your tippy toes in the snow, you're going to go straight through, okay? So that's why snowshoes were invented, is they, um, the people were noticing that animals that walked in the snow with success had really wide paws that they could distribute their weight, right? So snowshoes basically look like tennis rackets that are glued, well not glued, tied to the bottom of your shoes. And so it makes your weight not go through as small of a space. And so you can spread out and distribute that weight so that you don't penetrate down through the snow quite as harshly, um, which makes it easier to walk around. Think about like snowboards or skis. Um, you're just distributing that weight and trying to glide across the surface instead of like clomp, 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 right? Okay, so a lot of the mammals have big, wide feet. Now, some exceptions to that. Our friends, the moose. Uh, so moose do not have big, giant, wide feet. They do have things that go dunk, 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 dunk. They have their hooves. Um, and so in that way, they struggle a little bit. Uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else? They still have this layer of fat. All these animals have a thick layer of fur and a thick layer of fat, and all of that is very helpful because it's so cold, and it helps them um, when food is scarce. They can burn through that layer of fat and use it as a food source. Um, this is also an area that you are getting into hibernation behaviors and things like that because food is not available uh, in the winter for a lot of these animals. And so hibernation is a thing. Also, a lot of the animals are highly migratory. And that means that they travel place to place, right? They go in search of food. So wherever the, the prey animals go in search of food, the predators will follow, right? All right, what else? Um, a lot of the animals here will vary in color, some between brown, beige, and white. And that depends on which season they are best suited to blend in with, okay? Um, the moose is obviously best suited for fall and summer uh, months to try to blend in. Now, the uh, plant life here is really, really dense in some places. And so it is very hard to see a moose, even though you think, oh my gosh, these are massive animals. Sometimes in the middle of the woods, there's so much going on that you cannot see them until they're right upon you. Um, they are also aggressive when they feel like you are invading on their territory or if they have a baby, you know how that goes, right? Like any mama uh, with a baby is 
more aggressive than she would be without a baby. So uh, these animals are giant and they are still aggressive and they can still kill humans. So we should respect them and leave them to their space. All right, plants. Okay, so this is what we were talking about. We were talking about the needles, the pine needles. Um, and so the deal is, is that big leaves, right? Big, big leaves that are wide, like we see around here. Um, they're good at photosynthesis. The problem is, is that they have to fall off in the winter so that they don't freeze the tree, right? So you have to close everything and then grow new leaves all the time. Well, the taiga is cold, really cold, which is a factor that impacts photosynthesis a lot. And so the deal is, is that these needle structures can photosynthesize. They will photosynthesize less um, than a big broadleaf would but they can keep photosynthesizing through the winter, which is something that big broad leaves do not do. So in that way, they really got some good adaptations to continue to survive in a harsh environment, even during the harshest month, the winter, which is more than a month, it's harshest season. Um, yeah, so they, um, if, okay, so if it does get too, too cold, they will, you know, stop the photosynthesizing. But the deal is, is that they can start and stop a little more easily than a broadleaf could. All right, um, I'm gonna stop here and pick back up with a different biome. Let's see what our next biome topic will be. Oh, it's us. We're the next one, deciduous forest. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, I will see you um, at the deciduous forest.